hours away from totality and to see that great moment, Butler University has set telescopes out and they're aligned for people to come up and take a look with the experts. Matt Standridge is out at Butler University and Matt, you can see you've got a really good sized crowd behind you there. A lot of folks are really excited, Anne Marie. We're pumped, but I want to bring in the experts. I've got Dr. Shaw with us, an astronomer, also assistant director of the Holcomb Observatory. We've been talking about clouds for days now. Yeah. So we're just a couple hours out. We're looking at this sky. You got some serious clouds. Can you walk us through your thoughts on how they could or may not impact totality? Yeah, uh, well, right now this is uh, fine. You know, uh, if the sun happens to be uh, blocked by a cloud like this, there's nothing to worry about. You'll still see all the things you need to see, including that all important solar corona. And so wouldn't worry about it. That's such great news. So, so many folks across central Indiana. As an astronomer, how does today feel? It's just like it's the Super Bowl. It's the uh, World Cup final. It's just like the ultimate event of events. Like I'm so excited. I'm happy that so many people have turned out to see this and I am just hoping everyone's having a great time and we can't wait for it to get started. We are so excited. You guys have set up such a cool event here because we've got researchers and scientists working. We've got telescopes out that folks are able to look at the sun right now. Are there a couple things that you can maybe see on the sun right now with the telescope? Right. Yeah. So if you look through a telescope with a proper solar filter, of course, um, you might be able to see a couple of dark patches on the surface of the sun. These are called sunspots. These are cooler regions of the sun, and uh, you know they're really, really interesting to see. You might at first think they look like kind of dust on the lens of your uh, eyepiece, but they're actual uh, regions on the surface of the sun that are much cooler than the surrounding uh, areas. That's really cool to see. Dr. Shaw, thank you for your time. I know you're busy. We're excited. Thank you for hanging out with us today. Thanks for having me. Of thank course. You. We'll send it back to you guys. We're going to have a great time here at Butler. All right, thanks so much. All right, from one campus to another, from Butler to IU, that's where Karen Campbell joins us live at University Memorial Stadium in Bloomington. Karen tells us uh, what are some of the events that are underway for the eclipse there at IU Bloomington. Yeah, hey, uh, uh, and you know, we are here for the Hoosier Cosmic Celebration at Memorial Stadium doors just open. So these stands and this field behind me should be opening pretty or filling up pretty soon with everyone that wants to see the eclipse. Now things start here at one o'clock. We have the IU Ballet and other performance groups. We also have Dr. Mae Jemison, the first black female astronaut. We also have singer Janelle Monet and Captain Kirk himself. We're talking about William Shatner and we have the man who, get this, you wrote the score, Dominic DiIorio, right? You wrote yes. the score for uh, for William Shatner's ensemble today. Talk to us about that. Yeah, absolutely. I'm a professor at the Jacobs School, and when Captain Kirk wanted to come and give a speech here, was invited, he wanted music. And so the deans and the presidents and people reached out to me, like, could you write this for us? So I met with Bill like three or four times online. We went through some music, and then we came up with this, yeah. right? And it's going to be really special today because it will happen in the moments just before totality. Nice. And he ends his speech with a now the eclipse, nice. right? So it's really something. Yeah. And he also signed that for you, which is pretty cool. Yeah, you could look at this. It's just like amazing, right? Uh, and we have 60 students from the Jacob School of Music singing and playing today and two faculty, and it's really, it's a once in a lifetime thing. So I hope you'll come out if you're listening now and you're within distance. Come visit us here. It's going to be great. All right. Thanks so much, Dominic. We appreciate you. And this event today at IU goes on until about five o'clock today, ending with Janelle Monet singing. And you know what? If you don't have your eclipse glasses, we got you covered. Come on down to IU, guys. And I'll send it back to you. All right. I uh, just hope you don't hit traffic along the way. Karen Campbell reporting live for us. Thanks. We'll check back in a little bit. We are counting down to totality. You can join us on 13 News for special live coverage. That will kick off at 2 o'clock. And we will have Lester Holt that will be hosting nightly news from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Uh, so lots of coverage today, really straight through 630. Not just not much of a break. So uh, we have you covered. And there's so much going on. Like if you look live out at at the mm -hmm. White River State Park. Look at this view from above. Look at that large crowd that is gathering there. This is over by uh, the zoo and over by the Idol Jorg and over by the NCAA Hall of Champions. Yep. And I also was just talking and getting feedback from Allison Gormley. She said, make sure that the viewers know that the right White River State Park has a lot of free glasses. And if you want to wow, go get them, they are free. They're in containers in front of the visitor center there at White River State Park.
And when we were looking, Sean, at the sky there at Butler University and Matt's live shot yes. when they scanned up, yeah. you were like, this is perfect, this is perfect. Well, it's just great. I mean, look, we do meteorology, but it's awesome to have someone that you know, as a professor of this that mm -hmm. can talk about those impacts here. Mm -hmm. So again, it, we're talking about this very high layer and we can show you from our tower camera as well. We've got it pointed. Uh, basically where jet liners fly, that particular portion of the atmosphere is near saturation. So the contrails from the jet liners are not going to evaporate as quickly as they might normally. And the cirrus that's coming in from the southwest. Uh, so that's going to be part of it. But as we show you this particular view, and as the professor talked about, it's very minimal when you look at the sky overall here. So forecast, thankfully, thus far is kind of mapping out as expected. We're threading the needle from the storms we had yesterday. We have another weather system to our southwest coming in for tomorrow. In between those, we're in a pretty good spot here. Yes, downstream, there's some more mid-level, high-level clouds that may come in, but as the professor talked about, it's going to have very minimal impacts.